Everybody and welcome to My Way, conversations with entrepreneurs doing business outside the box. I'm your host, Jessica Dugas, and I'm so thrilled that you are here with us for another episode this evening. Um, if you Listen, if you're joining us live or on the replay, just know that this is an active environment. We would love for you to head over to the comment section, say hello, and let us know where you're joining us from this evening. And also, um, let us know as the show goes on if you have any questions questions for our guests this evening, and we would love for you to chime in and let us know um, any comments that you might have as time goes on. I see Heather is joining us from Ontario. Good to see you, Heather, this evening. Um, Heather, by the way, is an alumni of The Breakthrough Show. You can see her on all probably uh, 900 times on the network. We love to have her in the audience this evening. Um, so listen, our guest tonight, as an accomplished speaker, best-selling author, and financial analyst. Our guest this evening has effortlessly shifted into the world of prosperity coaching. He is helping his clients to achieve the financial freedom they desire and deserve. So without further ado, we would love to welcome our special guest, Joel, to the show. Welcome, Joel. It is so good to have you this evening. Thanks so much for having me, Jessica. I really appreciate you. Thanks so much. Absolutely. Um, I'm so excited because it has been a long time coming. Uh, we talked quite some time ago, and I'm really excited to get to sit back down with you again today because we've seen a lot of our guests on this show make big shifts, just as you did, from one realm of business to another. Um, but I would love for you to share with everybody, of course, where you're joining us from this evening. And um, I, I'm going to, we, we were talking before the show. <laughs> about favorite subjects in school. I, you're in the financial world. Was your favorite subject math? I need to know these things. <laughs> it absolutely was. So yes, uh, I majored in math and statistics at the University of Rochester, believe it or not. Yeah. I did major in finance, but uh, I, I did have a long career in finance. I started my career as an actuary. And some of you may know the difference between an actuary and an accountant. Hmm. Uh, I, mean, actually, I, I know actually, I don't. 
<laughs> so an actuary looks at his feet when he talks to you. An accountant looks at your feet when they talk to you. <laughs> they, they say I, an accountant is an actuary with charisma. Ah, okay. Okay. Gotcha. So you, you, you had that charisma or no? <laughs> so, but I'm not the typical actuary, but I, I did go through all the exams. I became a fellow of the Society of Actuaries and realized I really didn't like my day, day job, mm. but I really enjoyed analyzing stocks and I was doing it as a hobby. And I figured out if I could ever align my hobby and my career, life would be fun. And I wouldn't be disliking my eight to six. Yeah. <laughs> and so I talked to a lot of actuaries around the country and they all told me, Joel, don't move. You have the best job in the country. In fact, the actuary was on the cover of Forbes magazine in 1992 as the best job in the United States, lowest stress. Wow. And I was making $110,000 at 27 years old. That's equivalent, by the way, to 400,000 today mm. in today's dollar. So, yeah. but I had a dream. I had a dream to be a professional money manager. Mm. And so finally I found an actuary who was professionally investing and I followed his path sort of. And in 2008, I started working at Citigroup as a professional money manager. And some of you may remember 2008 was not the best year in the stock market. What do you mean, Joel? <laughs> the market was down 40%. Financial stocks, the only stocks that I was managing were down 57%. But we managed to make a little bit of money. 2009 was even better. And 2010 was great. And I will tell you, if there was a law there wasn't a law that was passed that said banks can't own hedge funds. I might still be working there, mm. but I was laid off along with the whole division. And that gave me the kick in the butt to start my own fund. So I started my own hedge fund and that was my true dream. Okay. So we need to rewind really quickly here because for those friends that are watching um, that may not have heard any of this language before, they might not know what a hedge fund is. So we want to tell everybody what that is, but I also want to shout out and say good evening to Starbright said that she met you um, in New Orleans. So it's good to have you here tonight, Vicki. Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Great to see you, Vicki. So let's yes. tell everybody what a hedge fund is. <laughs> so there are many types of hedge fund. My hedge fund was betting that some stocks were going to go up and other stocks were going to go down. So we were hedged. Mm, okay. Okay. Um, so just determining where the stocks are going to go. And is that the, the gist of it? Or yeah, so we were trying, we were betting some stocks were going to go up. Others were going to go down and we were hopefully picking the ones that were going to go up and we were betting long on them. And then the ones that we were going to bet go down, they are called shorts. And so the idea is that no matter what the market does, you can make money. Okay. Okay. Now that, I mean, when we talk about that, it makes a little more sense to me now and see, I loved math, but was not so much the, literally the only knowledge I have of stock market is when my grandfather as a child would sit me down in front of the television and he would say, watch for those letters and write it down. That was, that's all I know. <laughs> that's it, Joel. So you're going to uh, teach us, you're going to teach us here this evening. Was it any use to, was I, was I doing anything productive in those moments? Yes. Joel? <laughs> yes. In fact, if you read chapter four of the nine money rules millionaires use, you'll see that my two daughters, when they were six and four picked three letters each. Ah. And those three letters were stock symbols, financial stocks that were up over 100% in 2009. Wow. They're good stock pickers by just picking letters. And you can do that. It's a great parlor game, you know, or a great <laughs> bar game or a pub game. Go into a bar and ask your friends for three letters and then see if they're a stock symbol and then research them. I do wonder, though, if anybody had done that and thought it was not such a fun game in 2008. <laughs> <laughs> when all that and, and maybe not the last few weeks as well. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah but, absolutely. Uh, so, yeah, I was doing my dream. And then why am I doing this? Hmm. So in December, so I raised the money for my fund and December, 2015, we weren't going to be a long-term viable entity unless we raised more money. And so I went to a personal development course 
and and two things happened that changed my life. One was we had a guest speaker speaking about stocks and stock options. And when he spoke about options on stocks in particular, he said, you don't need much time. You don't need much money. This is how the rich people get rich. And options are essentially riskless. And I was sick to my stomach. Mm -hmm. I had people tapping me on the shoulder, whisper in my ear, Joel, does this make sense? It was day two of the conference. They knew I was a hedge fund manager. And so after he was done, we went outside of the auditorium. I said, please don't do this. He has no idea about your earnings, cash flow, tax status, and most importantly, no idea about your belief that you could become rich using options on stocks. Mm. Now, the second thing that happened at that course was we were given a wooden board two inches thick, and we were told we we're going to break it with our bare hand. I don't know if anyone's done that, but... There was a lot of fear in the room. We literally had to write down our next of kin. Just kidding. Just kidding. But there was a <laughs> lot of fear in the room. There was a lot of fear. And yeah. the exercise was called obstacles or illusions. On one side, we had to write our biggest obstacle, which I wrote raising enough money for my hedge fund for it to be a long-term company. Mm. On the other side, I, we had to write in red our, our, our ultimate goal sorry, in green, our ultimate goal. And I wrote making everybody in this room financially free. Hmm. Making everybody in this room financially free. I broke the board like everyone else did in that room. I went home that night and I couldn't sleep. First, that guy was in my head. And I realized if I could ever get up the courage to speak in front of 200 people, see my biggest fear in life at the time was public speaking. If I could ever overcome that fear, I could be authentic and teach people the truth about money, not lie to them. Mm -hmm. And then the wooden board, the second thing that happened at 3, 3.30 at night was that wooden board staring back at me, half the wooden board, making everybody in this room financially free. And then it hit me, I think it was 4, 4.30 in the morning. I took an early commute into Manhattan, went into my office on 54th and 6th. I sent an email to my investors telling them I'm giving them their money back. I'm shutting down my fund. I figured out my true purpose. Wow. Here I am helping others become financially free. That I mean, that's incredible. Be, like it, it took such an act of courage and bravery, first of all, to switch careers completely. That's part one. Part two, to do it when you're successful at what you're doing, <laughs> because, and this is something we've actually ended up talking a couple times on the show about how much courage that takes, because I'm sure you've had some little birdies in your ear at the time. Joel, what are you doing? Have you lost your mind? Is the next step getting a convertible and a leather jacket? What is going on, Joel? Um, so how, how did you handle that sort of balance between the chatter that I'm sure was going on, not just outside of you, but in the back of your own mind, I'm sure. And, and this knowing now, this inner knowing that you needed to make the change. That's a great question, Jessica. So I actually had a lot of people on that journey from actuary to professional money manager doubting me, mm -hmm. right? Doubting me on what are you doing? Like you're an actuary, you can't be a professional money manager. So I had many years. In fact, it took me 15 years from actuary and all those other steps to get me to professional money manager. So I, I knew some of the lessons were doubt the doubt, hashtag doubt the doubt, have faith in your dreams and desires rather than have faith in your doubt or believing in your doubt. Right. And so that's what I teach now. And that's what I truly believed in my heart. This is my purpose. I have to, anytime doubt comes up and a lot of people would reach out to me. In fact, my colleagues at my hedge fund were like, Joel, like, I remember I went to talk to my chief financial officer and she said, I was going to ask you for a raise. <laughs> and I was like, I'm shutting it down. She's like, what? <laughs> 
So yeah, I imagine yeah. that added another layer though too, right? Because you were managing other people. You had, you know, that's something I can tell you from personally, that's something that would have been a challenge for me. That's something that would have absolutely come up for me in that circumstance. I would have been like, but what about the other? Because I'm always like that. I'm always too, so worried about everybody else and quieting that inner stuff that's going on. Yeah, I mean, I, I did keep my colleagues on the payroll much longer than the money was being managed. So I mm -hmm. gave them plenty of time to look for yeah. other opportunities and so on and, and gave them great re letters of recommendation. But I knew in my heart, you know, when you're and, and this is what I teach now to my clients and people, some people in my membership is, you know, when you follow your passion and you're doing your purpose, the prosperity flows. And so if mm -hmm. your heart's not in it and you're, you know, not doing it with a full heart, you're doing it, I would say, bleep, bleep, half bleep. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> you that, can say it if you want, Joel. <laughs> okay. If you're doing it half ass, then it's there not going to work out, right? So. Yeah. Um, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's my, that's my belief. And I think if you go all in and you're working on your purpose with passion, then the prosperity will flow too. But if you're just not really into it, then it's really tough, I think, to be really successful. Right, right. So let's talk, let's, let's be honest for a minute. So now we, you know, you, you're, you've decided to follow your passion you tell everybody you're done with what you're doing. You're moving into doing other things. And because you followed your passion, the very next day, you've got millions of dollars, right? That's how that worked, Joel, right? So again, yes. hashtag doubt the doubt. <laughs> um, you know, it, it was a long period of time to shut down a hedge fund. In fact, my lawyer was very upset with me because <laughs> you can't legally shut down a hedge fund. <laughs> you can't legally shut down a hedge fund by sending an email. Right. Don't work right. that way. Oh, so okay. Real, Good to know. Right. So it's a long, it was a long process. It was 2016, most of that year, actually uh, selling the securities and then shutting down legal entities and so on. Uh, and while I was doing, after I had sold all the securities and still dealing with the legal and financial uh, issues, and my CFO took a lot of that uh, on her shoulders, then I started developing this coaching business and thinking about how I could get clients, how I could help them, where my expertise is. And, and maybe I should be clear that I, what I do is completely different, I think, than almost everybody on this planet, mm. because I teach spiritual laws about prosperity. I teach how to manifest money, and I also teach investing. Now, some people teach investing. Some people teach the first two pieces. But I don't know anyone who is a former hedge fund manager teaching investing and spiritual laws of money. And so I do all of that. And it's really critical to have the first parts, the mindset, the spiritual laws first. A lot of people will come to me and say, teach me everything you know about stock investing or real estate or crypto. And I say, I'll do that. But first we need to have the foundational principles. Right. And, and then they get upset and they say, no, I want to learn, you know, your proprietary stock screen inside and that blah, blah. I'm like, no, we're going to take weeks, if not months to get you to a, a mindset, a proper mindset, because I know without the proper mindset and without my first six rules and the nine money rules, you are not going to be successful managing money. Right. Or investing in whatever investment category you choose. Right. I mean, that partly answers one of the questions I was going to ask you, because like you said, you moved into teaching about spiritual laws about prosperity. And we've had other guests on the show before. Um, and even with myself, when I um, moved into some of the work that I do, because I'm also a Reiki master teacher and some some other things in the woo pool. And, uh, you know, it's not there's a lot of people that just 
that maybe have been with you on your journey that are like, what on earth are they doing? And not being so open to the new things that we're teaching. And we, you know, we hear the the things about, you know, stick to what you're doing. Those who don't understand aren't meant to be in your life at that certain time or whatever it is that people say about, you know, the disagreements that might come up or, or not understanding. But how did, how did you, how do you sort of handle that when, or how did you handle that when you had people in your life who maybe didn't know this side of you before and now you're doing new, now you're focused on mindset and they're like, but Joel, just give me the numbers. <laughs> right. It's, and, and I, I'll be completely open and, and honest with you, Jessica, that, and, and everyone who's watching, look, not everyone agrees with what I'm doing. It does, mm -hmm. it doesn't resonate with some of them. And so that's fine. You know, I, I'm also in 2017, I became a certified infinite possibilities trainer, mm -hmm. uh, Mike Dooley teaches uh, the core concepts from his New York Times bestseller, Infinite Possibilities. So I infuse the core concepts from that book, from the workbook, from our teachings into everything I teach. And so that quote unquote woo woo part of the teachings are really important. And look there, I, you know, like I said, I'm open. There are a lot of people in my life who didn't get the shift and if they just want to learn you know stock investing they can do that with other people that's not me right? right um if they're open and willing to you know if i say are you coachable that's one of the most important things you know right. if you're not coachable then i can't help you and some people i believe you know they may have some blocks and they just you know don't aren't open to some of the things that I teach and that that's fine too. You know, there's 8 billion people on the planet. It's okay if a hundred million people need my help. Yeah, right. Exactly. Exactly. And I mean, that's such, I think a huge um, mindset shift for a lot of us as entrepreneurs to lean into. We get so upset when we get that. No, we get so upset when we get that. Well, now it's not, you know, not, I don't get it. Why are you doing this? It's not for me, whatever answer we're getting. And the truth is, is that there's a lot of people on this planet and not everybody is for every person. And I would rather be, I finally got to that place myself a couple of years ago where I said, I would rather be for certain people than just kind of eh, to everybody, you know, um, and really be aligned. Does it, does it feel how does it feel to you like energetically when you meet that person, that client who is so open and so ready? Like how does, does it, cause I get really excited. Do you get really excited and you're like, yes, I can help this person. Yeah. I mean the light bulb, you know, I was just like the whole thing. I wanted to go back to the, the dealing with the news and what, I do, and I recommend to my clients who are entrepreneurs, is put together a spreadsheet with the numbers 1 to 100. Mm. And then next to 1 to 99, write no. And next to 100, write yes. And every time you get a no, you're one step closer to the yes. And you're, it's very unlikely you're going to get 99 no's. Mm. So, but keep on crossing them out. Know that you're making progress toward, towards your yes. And, you know, I've taught, told this to people while they're interviewing for jobs, when they're, you know, applying for podcasts, you know, it's okay. You know, like if, if it doesn't resonate with those particular people, that's fine. You're close to the yes that you want to get. So you right. can do that in business too. And, and, and just, you know, what I also teach is not attaching to a specific result. Hmm. So why is it that that client is the one you need to help? Why is it that it's that job you need to have? You know, a lot of people say, you know, I'm interviewing for these jobs and this is the one. How do you know? Are you that smart? Like maybe the universe has a bigger plan like that. If you come from the attitude of from bad things come good things and from terrible, awful things come amazing, great things. Mm -hmm. And if something you really desire doesn't happen, something awesome is about to happen. That's a pretty good attitude to have. And, and that's appreciating your whole journey, right? They say the joy is in the journey, mm -hmm. but it's true. You know, appreciating the whole process is 
really beneficial for you. And that's the state of gratitude, which by the way, is rule number five in the nine money rules. Yeah. Yeah. I, I want to go back really quickly to um, the concept of things taking a little bit of time um, because the, the reason I've kind of brought this up a couple times during this year, um, during this My Way series, that because I think there is um, a misconception in um, the entrepreneurial world, if you will, the coaching world, even more specifically, that we are going to, like you said, you following your passion now, you're going to, and that everything overnight, you're just going to start making a million dollars the next day, you're going to have a calendar full of clients and all. And there's not um, a lot of times, a lot of thought being put into that sometimes it takes time. And sometimes, you know, we have to build the relationships, we have to put ourselves out there. And sometimes we've moved into a world now where we, um, you know, we're learning new things. It's not what we were doing before. So for you, how did it take time to really for you to get into this space of coaching? And what do you sort of feel about that sort of misconception that's out there about, you know, the sort of overnight success that we want so desperately? Well, thoughts are things. <laughs> and there are limiting beliefs and empowering beliefs. And, and yeah. the limiting belief is it's going to take forever to right. become a, a money making entrepreneur. Um, but having said that, you, you may have this thought that, you know, I'm going to be making a million dollars a year coaching and then you have doubt. And so there's the thought and the dream and the vision and then the doubt and belief is really powerful. You know, I, I talk about affirmations and if you, if you're saying something that you don't truly believe you have massive doubt in, it's not effective. Right. So knowing the thought and then knowing if you have a counter thought, nothing's going to happen. Right. People mm -hmm. say, well, if thoughts become things, why isn't this thought that I just had yesterday becoming a thing today? Well, it's because mm -hmm. you're having doubt and, and or or this thought is on the way to something even bigger. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's a, that's one important point. The second is that manifestations don't happen immediately. One reason is because the joy is truly in the journey. And there's if, if, if you thought of something and it manifested every single time, all the amazing things in your life manifested like that, then there wouldn't be the joy in the journey. There wouldn't be this extreme happiness, right? And so, you know, I, I, celebrating the contrast is something that's really important, right? When there's something that's really bad happening, start tap dancing on the kitchen dining room table or the kitchen table because something awesome is about to happen. Yeah. So that that's important. The expectation. And then the waiting is also not just because of the joys in the journey, but because it's where there's a, a thought that things have to take time. Mm -hmm. It has to take some time. And so that could be one of your limiting beliefs that it has to take some time for it to come to fruition. And in my particular case, to answer your question, you know, I started having clients right away. Hmm. Like literally people, I started a meetup, you know, in 2016 and, and people were just asking me for advice right away. Now, were they signing up for, a program like I have now, three, six, 12 months. No, they were, they were kind of signing up for one session at a time. It was $150 or a hundred dollars. And it wasn't, you know, you weren't, you weren't getting rich by coaching a client for an hour twice or, you know, so people did come to me. A lot of people came to me in 2016, 2017, but I didn't have the programs I have now. I didn't have the books. I didn't have a membership. I didn't have a group course. So it wasn't, you know, you have to create a value proposition and a value chain in your business, which I realized early on, I had one-on-one -on -one coaching and I had free coaching and nothing in between. Right. So a lot of people took me up on the free. And then when I asked them to move towards the, you know, three month coaching plan, they're like, Joel, I'm struggling. I can't afford you. Right. Mm -hmm. So you have to create a value chain. So you have a $5 ebook or $15 book or, 
you know, an online program or a membership or a course, and then, you know, they can graduate to one-on-one coaching. So all that stuff I learned over the years, I've been doing this, as I said, since I shut down my hedge fund 2016. Mm -hmm. So no, it's not instantaneous, but maybe that could also be my limiting belief that I was taught that you can't start a business and it turns on a dime and becomes, you know, fruitful right away. My hedge fund as well, by the way, I, I literally was this close to starting my hedge fund in December, 2012. I had two investors that had orally agreed to give me money. And I moved into office space in Manhattan, 54th and Madison. I felt like I'd arrived 54th and Madison. You're overlooking the most expensive street in the world or one of the most expensive streets in the world, Madison Avenue on the, I could see it. You know, I had a window view and I have enough, enough space for eight people. And I called up the two investors and they said, Joel, we never agreed to give you money <laughs> in writing. And I was like, uh, I had no pipeline. I had, I had no cash coming in, only cash outflow. Yeah. And what did I do? I could have given up. I was literally this close. I had moved, I had everything lined up. I had lawyer, accountant, auditor, prime broker. I had my employees. I was all set to go. So what did I do? I acted as if I already had the money. Mm. And I've been acting as if every day since. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. And I I um I learned the same lesson last year, Joel, about the importance of things in writing. Uh lessons were learned and um and we're I'm still I'm the same as you. <laughs> living that way ever since. Uh, I love it. Um, I do want to ask you about the importance of relationships and who we're surrounding ourselves with when it comes to prosperity. Because as we're talking about this concept of affirmations and how we speak to ourselves, um, obviously, the only person on the planet we can control is ourselves. And we can talk ourselves. I can go, I go in the mirror every morning, Joel, every morning I go and I say, you are amazing. You are fabulous. You are healthy. You are, I do go through my whole thing that I do in the morning. It's, it's quite lovely. And, um, but that doesn't stop anybody else around me from having their moment and, you know, saying whatever they say that is not in the abundance, uh, wording that we like to use. Um, so how important is it? And then on the heels of that, what can we do? Um, if that is happening, what do, what, what would you tell people if they find themselves, if they're building themselves up and they find themselves surrounded by people who are just not in that same mindset? Yeah, it's really important and uh, a great question. So relationships and who you spend most of your time with, I, I forget who, made this statement, but they, they said your compensation, your salary will be the average of the five people you spend the most time with five years from now. Mm-hmm. So think carefully <laughs> about the people you're spending the most time with. And yeah, I think your relationships are very important. And it's, I would say, Law of attraction is very powerful. And and when if you're not feeling abundant and prosperous, if you're not putting that out into the world, it's really unlikely to flow back to you. So, you know, I I coach people on you know, you know working on their mindset every day, like you do. And so it's important to interact with those people who are, you know, lifting you up, not pushing you down. And yeah. you know, in your heart of hearts, those people who are supporting you, who are helping you to live your dreams, or people who are doubters, right? You know, doubt the doubt again, hashtag doubt the doubt. So yes. understand those people who are in your inner circle, who are maybe not so helpful. And Abraham Hicks says, dart in, dart out. Right. You know, okay. there are some people in your life you have to interact with your family, whatever. And if they're 
And, and usually, actually, the family are the ones who are the most doubting of you or not. Maybe. I mean, maybe that's a limiting belief, too. But if they are, dart in, dart out. You know, spend the time you need to spend and, and come back to those who are the most supportive and helpful and those building you up. I have my co-facilitator, whenever she calls me, whenever we talk, she's like, Joel, wait, is that Joel the prosperity coach for the millions and billions helping people around the globe become financially free? Is that, is that, that Joel? And I'm like, oh, yeah. So like people like that building you up, making you like, you know, really feel yeah. really, really powerful. Those are the kinds of people you want to spend the most time with. Right. Right. Yeah. I love that. And I love you sharing about the dart in, dart out kind of thing, because I think that keeps people stuck sometimes because they feel like, well, I'm going to have to create this boundary and I'm never going to get to see my mom again, or I'm never going to get to, you know, and it doesn't mean always to cut them out. But one of the things I say frequently is know your audience. If you know, if I know that my mom and I are not aligned when it comes to conversations about health and wellness, I don't talk to my mom about health and wellness. You know, we talk about other things, the weather, um, we talk about other things, you know? So I think it's, I think a lot of times that phrase, know your audience is used in business, but it can absolutely be something that people use in their personal lives and just know that start to learn who you're talking to and what you're talking to them about. And, and do you, um, how's that reaction the reaction that you're getting when you talk hitting you. Um, and if it's not what you like, don't talk to them about that anymore. Right, Joel? Jessica, that's a really awesome point, right? Because you know, I think in your heart of hearts where there are not alignments, right? Now I know I, you know, there are certain people I don't talk to religion or politics about and probably most everybody because that <laughs> those are divisive subjects, right? And so yeah. I just, you know, I'm all about creating the highest vibration I possibly can all day, every day. And I know that, it, you know, there's certain topics that will lower my vibration or the the gap will be large, mm -hmm. right? They'll be vibrating down here with anger and, and right. upset and fear and worry, you know, and I'm up here. And so you have a choice. You can continue to vibrate or go down to their level. If you go down, you're feeling bad. Or if you're way up here, you feel the gap, right, right, between the different emotions. So avoid those subjects and and continue to keep the high vibration. And hopefully they'll move up to your high level where you're vibrating in terms of appreciation and gratitude and happiness and joy. Right. Right. And, and don't have the expectation for that. You, you know, we, I, I have to, I, and I'm saying this out loud because I have to remind myself of this all the time. Do not have the expectation that they're going to be on that same journey as you, or they're even going to get to where you are because it might not necessarily be what they, um, what they have going on in their journey, Absolutely. their lives. Um, so that's my own reminder, Jessica, listen. <laughs> Well, that's a really good point. And like I said, dart in, you know, there's certain people, yeah. you know, you know, you're on your own. Everyone's on their own journey. And there are some people vibrating way higher than I am. I like to hang out with those people. They may not like to hang out with me, but I'm trying <laughs> to move up to their level. Right. So those are the people I like to hang out with because, you know, they're raising my vibe. You know, you want to yeah. hang out with people who raise your vibe. Right. Yeah. But, you know, I, it's the same thing with those other people. But you have to know those people who want to move up. You know, there's certain people who want to raise their vibration, want to raise their frequency and other people, it's not, they, they don't get it or they're not interested or they're, they're on their own journey. And so yeah. that's, that's fine too. So you dart in, dart out. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. Um, I want to ask you about um, actually getting into some of the, the mindset work you do around prosperity. What are some of the biggest things that you see that are holding us back from being prosperous? I think the biggest things are limiting beliefs. Hmm. And I hear it almost every day. These, there are limiting beliefs and empowering beliefs. I don't believe there are truths. Right. So it's what is your belief? Do you believe that you can be spiritual and rich? Do you believe that you have to work really, really hard 
to be rich and successful? Do you believe that it's money flows easily and frequently? Or like somebody who misheard me once said, money flows easily and infrequently. <laughs> So yeah. <laughs> what what are the what are the beliefs, right? Um, right? You know, do you believe you're a money magnet? Do you believe money is all around us? There's an almost infinite amount of money out there because I was taught growing up it's a zero sum game. If I make more, you make less. You know, it's it's there's there's never enough. Hmm. You know, the rich get rich, the poor get poor. These kind of beliefs are not serving you. So that that's there's there's a ton of them out there with regards to money, you know. You know, I I grew up getting screamed at. We can't afford that. Money doesn't grow on trees. That's too expensive. And then you know, if I let the light on in my room and we left the house, Joel, we're not a shareholder of Long Island Lighting Company. Shut that light off. Mm. You know, so it's all about lack and scarcity and and not enough as opposed to, wait a second, there's $450 trillion of net worth on this earth. Four hundred. I can't even conceive of that number, right? If you put a dollar bill from the floor to ceiling in my house, that's a million. You need a thousand houses, you know, probably miles to create a billion. And then a trillion is like all of the United States. And you need 450 United States to have $450 trillion piled high dollars from floor to ceiling. It, you know, that's, it's almost infinite. Yeah, it's a lot of money. <laughs> and so, and there are so many instances, and, and there are so many instances of abundance, not just talking about money, which mm -hmm. we don't think about. The energy from the sun is almost infinite. The amount of breaths you take in your lifetime I don't know. It's pretty close to infinite. <laughs> it's a lot. Mm. Do, you, do you ever count your heartbeats? I mean, so many things we take for granted. Yeah. Right. And it's, yeah. so there's amount, there's abundance everywhere you look on this earth. And that we're taught about scarcity and lack and there's not enough. Yeah, there's plenty. Yeah. It's it's a distribution in terms of money. It's a distribution issue. Right. I mean, 450 trillion is enough for the whole world, <laughs> but it's just distributed in, inappropriately. And and I you know and then there's the, the piece where it uh, goes back to mindset, because even if you redistribute and not a socialist, but even if you redistribute the whole net worth of the earth to all the people, eight billion people within 10 years, it'll be back similar to what it is right now. Mm -hmm. And that's just mindset. Yeah. You know, the people who are like saying, you know, there's not enough, the poor get poorer, you know, and, and I, I understand. I mean, there are, you know, people who are struggling. I'm sure a lot of people listening right now are struggling and it, you know, there, these are real situations, right? right. I, I understand that I, in, in real life, you know, people are dealing with, deep, dire situations, getting kicked out of the apartments and having student loans that are, they can't really pay back, right? Mm. There's, there's some real issues, but if you're coming from it from a point of abundance, then you can work on your mindset first and then the money will flow. So that to me is the biggest, the belief systems, right? And working on those belief systems and there are simple techniques with affirmations as you already talked about, Jessica, to work on your self-worth, but also on your money mindset. Audio mm -hmm. file that I give my clients, it's actually free on my website as well. If you peruse it, you'll find them. Um, I mean, there's just many ways you can do to and, and visualization is another really powerful way to to change your mindset around money. You know, visualize five minutes a day, your dreams and desires. You know, we were taught in school when you're daydreaming, the teacher would scream at you. So we stopped. Mm. But that may be the most important thing you do ever in your life is daydream. Yeah. Think about yeah. your dreams and desire for five minutes. Write them down before you and do it on purpose every day on purpose. Daydream. Find a place 
find a time. Don't do it in bed right before you go to sleep. You're going to fall asleep. Do it on your couch <laughs> right when you wake up. And then write down three, three dreams and desires. And two, two most important parts of visualiza- visualization is to make your future dream a present reality by assuming the feeling of the wish fulfilled, which is a quote from Wayne Dyer's book, Wish is Fulfilled. Make your future dream a present reality by assuming the feeling of the wish fulfilled. Mm. Right? And so if you can feel the feeling of the wish, of the dream, before it's actually occurred, you're golden. It's going to come quick. And the other important mm. part of the visualization is to visualize the end result. Don't visualize how am I, you know, walking into the 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 showroom for the car of your dream car, but visualize you already driving it. And you're driving that blue convertible Maserati with the 454 horsepower V8 engine. You know, you're driving up 95 here in the Northeast at 95 miles an hour. Don't tell the policeman I said that. Mm -hmm. And your hair is blowing in the wind, you know, you have Jessica's hair, not mine. <laughs> you're, you're, yes. you're so happy. You're so ecstatic, right? You're yeah. like, this happened, this happened. So visualize the end result, not how is it going to happen? Don't get bogged down in the cursed hows. Right? Mm-hmm. You don't need to know what the cursed how is. Just know that the abundance is on its way. And it's amazing. I found in my Money Miracles membership, people have manifested over five hundred and sixty-five thousand dollars so far wow. in less than a year. And and we like you could not if you told me the ways that they've manifested money, I would have been like, "What are you talking about? Like that's impossible." <laughs> you know, it's just it's really amazing how things just you know. You, so you can't you know, it's really unlimited abundance, right? You can't yeah. predict how it's going to come. So right. that, that's um, visualization is another tool um, acting as if, you know, shifting your beliefs using affirmations and audio files are really great. I love those ideas. And I, I mean, I can speak from experience about, you know, sometimes these beliefs that we have around money are not even conscious things that we're aware of in the moment. I watched my grandparents work really hard for what they had, but it was never, I never really had that money or that, that um, belief that a lot of people have of you have to work hard to, in order, like you have to, you know, work yourself to death. I never really had that, but what I did witness was my grandfather and grandmother working really hard for what they had. They took vacations. They did, they did amazing things in their lives. And then six months after my grandfather retired, he had his stroke. And he was unable to walk, talk, nothing for 14 years thereafter. And I I realized in recent years that that created a belief in me of why bother? It's going to be taken away anyway. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to be able to spend it anyway. And so sometimes it's, I mean, I'm just speaking from that experience point of it's not what, not always what we might think of. So, you know, don't be afraid to dig a little, <laughs> dig a little deeper there when you work with Joel, because there might be other things <laughs> going on that you just didn't even realize were the thing that were holding you back. And what's really interesting also is your actions give you hints into your beliefs, mm. right? So one of my clients told me his father would squeeze the toothpaste with a wooden board all the way to the very edge. Wow. Mm. Now, is that abundance action or limited, you know, like, like I don't have enough money action, right? So think about ways you are in your life living in, in abundance or scarcity, mm. prosperity or poverty. And I'm not saying splurge, although, yeah. uh, uh, you know, splurge to a point where you're going into debt. But in, in my last book, Infinite Love and Money, we we created seven money personality types. Mm. And I actually, we say, if you're a splurger and you're living with the protectionist type who wants to hoard the money, it's actually, you know, if you're the protectionist, splurge once a month, you know, get the mani pedi, get the massage once a month. Don't go into debt to do it, but have a splurge. Whereas the splurger, we're saying, wait, 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 
protect, you know, go the other way, save a little bit, right? As opposed to splurging so much that you're running out of money and, and, and you know, the, the, the credit card debt is going higher and higher. So, mm -hmm. so know where you are, what your monetary personality type is too, is really important, right? And, and so when you know that you can act differently and, but know what, you know, think about the actions you're taking on a daily basis, right? You know, there are you not driving because gas is so expensive? You know, you're walking places. And you just started that in the last few months because gas doubled, right? <laughs> and you're like, oh, I can't afford it anymore, yeah. right? Or you're you're taking, you know, a taxi because that's saving some money versus driving. You know, what actions are you, because actions are a really good way to uncover limiting beliefs. Mm. So if you watch yourself throughout the day, you'll see ways that you're acting in abundance or poverty, prosperity or lack. And that will uncover. And so you don't even need to know what the limiting beliefs are. You just see how you're acting and change your actions, which will create new beliefs, which will create new thoughts. I love that. That's an amazing tip, an amazing tip. Cause I think we over, well, I, I think, I think we overthink we do. Cause, and I do. So we, we do that. Sometimes we feel like, well, we have to figure out the why we have to figure out the, the deep meaning of life in order to move forward, but that's not necessarily the case. So I love what you're sharing about how our actions uncover or have the ability to uncover our limiting beliefs as well. Um, one thing before, you go on just yep. is that when you're spending time trying to find that limiting belief like what is wrong with me there's nothing wrong with you hmm. stop you know it, that's a problem when you're saying oh i have something wrong with me i gotta fix this well what way where your focus goes energy flows hmm. right so if you're saying oh i must i have this problem no if you don't have a problem you're a perfect awesome special human being well, you're a spiritual being in a human body, but yeah. let's just, you know, so folk trying to, you know, figure out what's wrong with you, then you're like, you're creating this thing that's wrong with you, even though there may be nothing wrong with you. So that's a really important point as well. So focus yeah. on the actions and see, just correct some actions. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I don't, we had a, we've had a series of, um, we have a few different series on my morning show project joy, uh, recently and Kenneth Lord last Thursday was to, literally started with the same thing. There's nothing wrong with you. You're not broken. We need to stop that you know, constantly feeling like we need to fix ourselves. Now, if you're choosing to shift things and move forward and to move to a different space, that's, di that's very different than saying I'm broken. Let's find the duct tape. Right. Right. Exactly. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, I would love for you to share with everybody um, what they can find. I, we've, I've already shown your website below before, but I'm going to put it there again. Uh, and also tell us where the name of your company comes from, because I I thought that was so fun. I would love for you to share everybody about that really quick before we look at your site. Sure. So it, Lauren is my oldest daughter. So Ellie, you are for Lauren. She's 18 now going to Syracuse University in three months. I am ah, very proud Congratulations. Dad. And uh, Morgan is M-O-R from Morgan. And Morgan's 16 on the way to becoming a doctor. Um I think she knows it better than I do. So, and the essay is just for my first two letters of my last name. So I was going to, I don't want to name it Lore Moore, but Salamore sounds more abundant than Lore Moore. So Salamore. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like a, a fancy, like Italian word or something like that. <laughs> just something that's amazing. Uh, but you can go to salamore.com and what are they going to find there, Joel? Oh yeah. So right, right at the homepage there is uh, my Money Miracles membership. It's only $59 a month. I'm basically giving away. Uh, I want to help more people become financially free. It's a six-month membership. It takes you from wherever you are right now towards financial freedom, creating. A, we have a ton of content in there, a lot of great guests who are providing content as well. And next month, the whole Infinite Possibilities course will be included in the Money Miracles membership as well. 
Wow. A whole co so before they had to buy that separately and now it's just going to be in there for the yeah. members. Yeah. I love that. I love that. So we invite you to go check out sellamore.com and definitely I love the pictures of you with Mike Dooley as well. Um, nice. really, really love that. Uh, and I know that you also have another very special, uh, gift for our guests this evening. Would you like to share what that is? Yeah. I'd love to give away a free copy of the nine money rules millionaires use. I'll, I'll do it randomly. Just text NMR to the number six, six, eight, six, six. That's NMR for nine money rules. And you'll get a free copy of the nine money rules millionaires use which is, was a bestseller in 2019 uh, on Amazon. I love it. I love it. Um, and I, I definitely highly recommend you guys checking out any of Joel's books. Um, I know that uh, you're a best-selling author, as you mentioned. And I know from our previous conversations that we've had and this one that you put lots of heart and lots of experience behind what you do. And I have to say, it is so refreshing. The people that we've had on the show recently to talk about money or finances or you know any of these things that have been, even sales that have been very cold um, you know, uh, environments before, you guys are really warming up the space. And may I say how refreshing that is? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Jessica. I appreciate you. Absolutely. I love it. So make sure you guys check uh, text NMR to 66866. And, and um, he's going to draw a name to receive a free copy of the nine money rules and millionaires. Yields. I know that some of y'all from our personal conversations um, want to be a millionaire. Hello. And so you need this book. And if you don't win it, I highly recommend that you get it. They can get that on your, do you have a link on your website and stuff for the books? Absolutely. Yes. And, and you'll be acting as if, by the way, if you do enter the drawing, because you'll also get a free copy of a white paper called the five mistakes new millionaires make. So you'll be mm. acting as if you're a new millionaire, you'll get the white paper, read the white paper. It's free. Um, but if you're not yet a millionaire. Absolutely. I love that. I love that. Joel, it's been such a pleasure to finally get down and sit down and talk to you to this evening. And is there anything that you would like to leave our audience with tonight? Doubt the doubt. Have mm -hmm. faith in your dreams and desires and just know that you're supported. You know, even if you don't see the support around you in the physical world, know that you're supported with in the non-physical, there's plenty of people here to help and, and know um, that you are supported. So go out, go for your dreams, you know, go for it. Love it, I love it. Thank you so much for being here tonight, Joel. It was a pleasure. Thank you, Jessica. I really, really, really appreciate it. It's been an honor. Absolutely. All right, you guys, listen, we have a couple of quick announcements. I want to thank Joel so much for being here tonight. I want to thank all of you for watching or listening wherever you are in the world, especially my replay people as well. You know, I love you so much watching it hours of the night that I am snoring. So thank you so much for that. Um, I also want to remind you that Project Joy Live is live at 7 a.m. Central Time tomorrow morning. And we have the fabulous Scott Mason back on the show. And then also tomorrow night, it's 6 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. Eastern time. We have the Jacksons back for Divine DNA, diving deep into your relationships. We talked a little bit about relationships tonight, so make sure you don't miss that show with the Jacksons. I'm your host, Jessica Dugas, and I want to thank you so much for being here tonight for another episode of My Way, and we will see you in two weeks with April Grim Long. See you next time.